Welcome to the Air Gun Show. We've got a great little brake barrel on test this week, the BSA Comet Evo. But before that, I'm out high shooting with the Daystate Pulsar. We're for a short hide building session this morning. It's very handy because the hide's already in place, so I can nip out without having to go through the rigmarole of building it. This hide's been up for about four weeks now. And it's already produced crows, magpies, jackdaws, and even a couple of jays. So let's get a decoy out and see if it'll yield something for us today. And so I make my way up to my hilltop hide. It's a nice still spring morning and it's an absolute pleasure to be out and about in the countryside. Bagging a few birds from the hide is a bonus on days like this. Right, well this is the hide site. It works well because it's a good open field here so the decoys will really stand out. It's situated between some woods and a busy farm. Now we could have targeted the woods, but the decoy would have been obscured by trees there. Likewise, the farm's a real feeding station for these birds but it's a very busy farm, machinery whizzing about all over the place and a lot of farm workers there, so not really a safe place to shoot. I'm hoping here we're in the middle of those two areas that the birds are frequenting and hopefully we can pick them off here. I'm confident that my hide is set up in a good spot, but before I make myself comfortable, I'm going to head back out for one more task that should help to swing the odds in my favour. I'm going to use a decoy to grab the attention of passing birds and hopefully draw them within range. It's going in front of my hide, but I'm not going to yomp straight across the field to put it there. Instead, I'm taking a less direct route that's less likely to blow my cover. Right, rather than walk straight down the field from the hide, I've gone round the border and walked across from a different angle. That's because corvids are pretty canny birds. Now if they spot my footprints in the dewy grass, hopefully that will draw their eye back to a fairly inoffensive looking bit of hedge, which won't spook them, rather than leading them right back to my hide, which they may then spot and then fly away. Well, I'm using a magpie decoy today, which will also attract crows, jackdaws and other corvids. Likewise, crows will attract most of the corvid family. But another little tip is to add a bait. Now, a lot of shooters, myself included, will say use something like a dead rabbit or a dead squirrel. However, you don't always have that handy. So what I've got today, what I always try and keep in my kit bag, is a squirrel tail. That's not quite as effective as having the whole thing, but it just suggests that this magpie is down on some carrion suggest that there's a breakfast here for others who will hopefully swoop in and have a closer look. With the trap set, it's time to head back to the hide. And obviously, don't forget to walk back the same way you walked in to avoid leaving that track back to your hide. Corvids have great eyesight and are notoriously wary. Even with the cover of a hide net, I'm not taking any chances, so it's on with my head net and then back on with the hat so the peak can throw some shade over my eyes and the exposed skin around them.
The gloves come off quickly to get the Daystate's 10-shot magazine loaded up and ready for action. Filling magazines is always a bit of a faff, but it means I'll be able to reload quickly and without having to fumble for pellets if I get some action as the session unfolds. It's back on with the gloves to hide any flashes of pale skin in the morning light and I'm fully concealed and ready for the arrival of my quarry. It's quite a misty morning and hopefully that's not going to stop the birds from seeing the decoy. Now the sun is trying to burn through so fingers crossed it will clear off. I'm using the Daystate Pulsar today, which I've had on test for a while. It's performed brilliantly on paper, so I thought I'd give it a chance out in the field. First impression is that certainly, for use in the confines of a hide, that ballpup configuration makes for a really compact gun. It's handling really well. What I am having to watch is that, as with a lot of guns, I don't take the weight of the gun on the barrel when I push the muzzle through the hide because that's obviously going to possibly raise the barrel a little bit and push shots off high. So what I'm doing is just pushing through a little bit further so that the dust cap is sitting in the hide and taking that weight, leaving the barrel to sit as it always would. The morning wears on and our first taker eventually swoops in for a closer look at the decoy setup. But this one isn't to be. That one spooked. I think it either saw light glinting on my scope or on the camera. I don't have to wait long for another chance though. Right, we've got two jackdaws in. Down nice and cleanly. Let's hope the other one comes back. The Pulsar certainly passed its first test with flying colours, and it's soon in action again as another jackdaw swoops in to survey the decoy. I thought that one was going to fly on initially, but it's just dropped like a stone. I can see it now dead in the field. It was bobbing about a bit much for the headshot, so I went for the heart and lung area. And that's one thing to watch with heart and lung shots. Firstly, that you don't just aim for the middle of the chest, aim for the fold of the wing, so you are specifically hitting that heart and lung area. Now, as happened with that one, because it's not so immediately lethal as a headshot, what you're doing is causing failure of the heart or the lungs, Sometimes the bird will fly on, so keep a close eye on it, because often what will happen is it'll initially look like it's going off quite strong, and then it will just drop like a stone, completely dead. Right, well we've had our lot now. Interesting thing this morning was that the chances we did get all came from the same tree, which does really prove the point of locating a decent city tree and setting up within range of that, rather than expecting birds to constantly land right next to the decoy. Now a little bit more about this site, I've chosen a hide site that puts a good high bank behind me that stops me getting skylined, less chance of birds spotting my silhouette. Another thing you may have noticed is there's a lot less or next to no green vegetation on the hide today. Normally I'd thread in nettles, a lot of other greenery to try and make the hide blend in, certainly if I was planning to shoot it within, within a day or two of building it. However, because this hide's been left in situ for quite a long time, that greenery would have wilted and it would look very unnatural and probably stood out more than a hide that's scantily dressed like this one. Also, because this one's been up for so long now, it's just been accepted as a natural part of the landscape.
I reckon there's more action to be had from this hide site, so the camo net is staying where it is. But the squirrel tail and magpie decoy are going back in my kit bag until next time. All that's left to do now is pick up the two jackdaws that fell to the pulsar on its first pest control assignment. Well, only a short session but I'll settle for two birds and I think it really does go to show the value of leaving that hide in situ. It means you can nip out, you haven't got the rigmarole or more importantly the disturbance of constructing it when you intend to shoot. That means the local wildlife is taking it for granted and starts flighting back in much more quickly. Well worth giving a try if you've got a discreet spot on one of your shooting permissions where you can set up a hide and leave it in situ. The Day State Pulsar delivering the goods there on its first hunting trip. And now it's over to the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. Brought to you by the Air Gun Center. Shooting organisations are desperately trying to reduce the impact of air gun licensing on Scottish shooters. Basque has championed a set of amendments to the bill, which could see the requirement drop for existing holders of firearm and shotgun licences, and less strict regulations imposed on under-18s. Basque said it was still strongly opposed to the bill, but given its progress through Parliament, it wanted to do what it could to make it more workable for the police and for shooters. Air guns are set to play a major role in a forthcoming charity shoot organised by Basque. Sponsored by Derbyshire's estate agents, with support from Batten solicitors, the event takes place at Cricket St Thomas in Somerset on the 20th of June. The Help for Heroes charity shoot will include a 50 sporting clay layout, 50 bird flush and shotgun instruction. There will be several air gun ranges and a chance to win a BSA Comet Evo. The Air Gun Show's Matt Manning will also be on hand to answer any of your air gunning questions. For more information, contact Basque Southwest Regional Officer James Green on 01884 260 910. Shooters in the Southwest now have their own Ronnie Sunshine store. Owned by Eric and Shirley Irish and managed by former British and world field target champion Kevin Jackman. Ronnie Sunshine's Devon stocks a huge range of air guns and accessories. Located on Sabre Close in Bovey Tracy, near Newton Abbott, it's even bigger than the business's Berkhamsted base and features air rifle and pistol ranges. And finally, Basque and Natural England have agreed to work together on an action plan for the countryside. The plan will cover biodiversity, wildfowling, general licenses, coastal access and more. Basque's Green Shoots programme will receive particular emphasis. Basque chairman Alan Jarrett said the partnership was a significant marker in the progress of shooting and conservation and should be welcomed by everybody who shoots. That was the Egan Show News. Well, that wasn't bad for open sights. There are a lot of good quality, affordable spring guns around at the moment, and this week's test gun is up there with the best of them. The BSA Comet Evo retails for £149, and for that you get a very sound, full power brake barrel. The first thing to strike me about this air gun is the quality of its finish. 
something that BSA is renowned for. The bluing on the metalwork is of a standard I'd expect to find on an air gun costing twice this price, and the Evo also appears to be very well engineered. The stock is a tough synthetic model that should be able to withstand just about anything you can throw at it. It also helps to keep weight down, and the Evo weighs just 2.7 kilos unscoped. It's an ambit extra stock, but the fit is still exceptionally good. Looking at the stock in more detail, it's got a nice long forend with grippy rubber inserts on either side. There's also some stippling on the pistol grip, which makes for a nice tactile hold. The rake of the pistol grip isn't as pronounced as many, but that doesn't appear to compromise trigger attack in any way at all. Moving on to the butt end, there's a ventilated rubber pad, which just helps to dampen some of that recoil. The Comet Evo is fitted with fibre optic open sights, which are adjustable for windage and elevation. The elements on them really glow and seem to be finer than most, which certainly makes for a higher degree of precision. The cylinder is machined with rails to accept scope mounts and there's also a hole for a recoil arrestor pin. The cheek piece is high enough to give good eye sight alignment and is also high enough for telescopic sights provided you don't go for excessively high mounts. To cock the gun, give the end of the barrel a swift knock to unlock it and then draw it all the way down. It's a long stroke so make sure you've got your fingers down safely out of the way. It's also a very smooth stroke. The Evo measures up at 109 centimetres and has a 47 centimetre barrel, which makes for brilliant leverage, so shooters of smaller build really shouldn't struggle to cock it. Once the barrel clicks down into place, pellets are loaded direct to the breech, and there's also an automatic anti-bear trap mechanism for added safety. Once you've loaded up, swing the barrel back up where it snaps into place in a very solid lockup, and you're ready to shoot. The quality of the trigger can make or break an affordable air gun, and I'm pleased to say that the Comet Evo has a very good one. I'd have preferred a metal trigger blade, but I have to admit that the one on the test gun is very comfortable and works well. It's a two-stage adjustable unit, it's surprisingly crisp and a real pleasure to use. There's a resettable manual safety catch in front of the trigger. I could think of better places to put it, but it still does what it's supposed to do. You push it back to make the gun safe and then flick it forwards when you're ready to fire. Well, that's a quick whiz through the BSA Comet Evo's main features. You've already seen that it's pretty handy with the open sights, but let's put on some tellies and have a go at some paper targets to see just how accurate it is. Well, that's not bad for an air gun that costs less than £150. The Evo does have a bit of a snap from its muzzle, and there is a bit of a kick, but then it's knocking out power at over 11 foot-pounds. That's a five-shot group, shot over 20 metres, and fell comfortably within an inch. So this air gun's certainly going to lend itself for close to mid-range pest control. I'm well impressed with the BSA Comet Evo. It's smooth to cock, fun to shoot, and certainly delivers the goods down range. It may not be an expensive air gun, but in terms of features and performance, it certainly exceeds its very modest price tag. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and look at the benefits that you could be enjoying through Airgun membership. Hey.